Welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're going to go over how to drive the Model T. Um, now, keep in mind that I'm still relatively new to this. This is my very first Model T. Uh, I just finished building it. So if you haven't seen the build series on this car, you should definitely check that out. But I just finished building it and I'm still getting good at driving it, but I understand the principles. So we're going to go over how it works and how you drive it in this video. Okay, so it definitely drives unlike any other car ever made, really. Um, it's kind of more like a tractor than a car in its controls. So we'll go over the controls really quick and then we'll start it up and we'll take a short drive. So first of all, uh, the pedals. So you've got three pedals here. Um, none of them function as a modern car's pedals would. This one is called the clutch. It's not really a clutch, it's more like a gear shift. This one is reverse, and this one is your brake. So the first pedal on the left, the clutch, when this pedal is all the way forward, you're in low gear, and when it's all the way back, you're in high gear. And you only have those two speeds, low and high. This is the parking brake. When it's all the way back, it sets the parking brake, but people also kind of refer to this as a shifter as well, which isn't really true, but the reason they do that is because this lever also controls this pedal. So like I said, all the way forward is low, all the way back is high. Uh, in the middle is neutral. And when you pull this lever to um, put the parking brake on, it also moves this pedal into the neutral position. So we're in neutral now. When you want to take off, you move this to the middle, which this pedal is still in neutral, but it now has the ability to be pushed forward. And when you push it forward, you engage it into low gear. But when you let off, it still comes back into neutral. It doesn't go into high gear. In order to allow that pedal to move all the way back and go into high gear, you have to have the parking brake handle all the way forward. And now when you let off on this pedal, it comes all the way back and it engages high gear. So that's why people think of this as kind of like a gear shifter. But really, this pedal is your total gear shifter. That's low, that's high, in the middle is neutral. And this just controls that pedal to a certain extent. So, um, that's the clutch pedal. Like I said, this middle pedal is reverse, so it would normally be your brake pedal is now reverse. And then this right pedal is your brake. So it would normally be your accelerator pedal is now your brake pedal. But the brake, doesn't really work like a brake in a modern car either, just like the clutch doesn't work like a clutch in a modern car. So the brake is a transmission brake only. The parking brake does run some brake shoes on the rear wheels for the parking brake, but there are no brakes on any of the wheels that are activated by this pedal. So none of the wheels help stop the car. The transmission alone stops the car. And the way that all of these pedals work, if you saw the build video uh, when I was assembling the engine, you would have seen the metal bands that go inside the transmission. And these metal bands have a fabric around the inside of them. It was cotton originally, and then the aftermarket ones are Kevlar. But basically you have a piece of cotton or Kevlar inside of a metal ring, and that metal band, that ring, clamps down on a spinning drum. And that that's what engages, it's a planetary gear system, that's what engages reverse or forward or brake. So your brake is just a oil soaked piece of cloth being tightened down onto a smooth metal drum. I mean, there's not a lot of braking. So you can't use your brakes like you would in a modern car. Like for instance, I'm in a very, very hilly area where I live, it's all hills. I would have to drive a couple miles to find a flat road. So I had to learn very quickly how to drive this car up and down hills. And that's quite different than driving it on flat roads. And it's very, very different than driving any other car for sure. So the brake, you cannot count on the brake at all to slow you, you, you down for a long period of time. So you can't use the brake going down a hill. So it's all done by engine braking. So to discuss that, we'll talk about the controls here at the wheel. So this, is your throttle, this is your accelerator, and this is your timing. Modern cars adjust timing on their own based on their needs in lots of different ways. But back then, um, you had to adjust the timing yourself. So all the way up 
is fully retarded on the timing and all the way down is fully advanced on the timing. And the timing ends up being uh, a very critical part of driving this car on hills. Now on flat roads, uh, I think you'd probably set the timing and pretty much keep it in one, sim one spot and you can just use this to accelerate and you're good. Uh, but in hills, uh, like I drive on, you have to use the timing all the time. You have to change it, whether you're going up a hill or down a hill. So, um, so I mentioned the, the engine braking. So the way that, this was the, the, the thing that took me a little while to figure out and it's like the most important part about driving this car on hills was the engine braking. Originally, I, I tried using the, the foot pedal brake, which like I said, you can't do, it just won't work. So what you have to do is you have to keep the car in gear all the time. So when you're going downhill, you just slow the engine down as much as possible. So uh, on a very small incline, you could just turn the throttle all the way up uh, and that would slow the engine down enough and you could go slowly down the hill. But where I live, the hills are much steeper than that and that doesn't get you nearly slow enough. You would just accelerate out of control and you would wreck just, just by using this alone. So what you also have to do uh, is retard the timing all the way uh, retarded. So then the engine is just barely running. Really, gravity is what's keeping the engine running. The engine probably would barely turn over on its own, but because the car is forcing it forward, it's continuing to keep it running. And so that slows the car down enough, uh, and it actually makes it a very quiet, very smooth experience going downhill. So you'll see when we're driving, that's going to be the quietest time in the car. When I go up the hill, um, it gets much louder and in some cases if you're going down a steep hill you have to put it in low gear to make the engine brake even more but so so again on the braking so even on a flat road or when you're coming to a stop you don't use the brake pedal very much at all so you use the engine braking all the way until you get right up to the stop and then maybe for the last five feet or so you hit the brake pedal and you use that to come to a complete stop but you use the engine braking almost entirely to stop the car so uh, like I said, you'll see when we're going downhill, it's actually really quiet and smooth and great because I just push these levers forward, I keep it in high gear for most downhill uh, drives, and it's just awesome, smooth, quiet, enjoyable. When I go uphill, some slight inclines I can go up in high gear, and so those are still relatively smooth, but a lot of the inclines I have to go into low gear, and low gear is really low. There's a huge gap between low gear and high gear. The gear ratio. So it gets quite loud going up a steep hill and it's very very slow. Um, I don't have the speedometer hooked up right now but I have used the GPS speedometer on my phone and there are definitely cases where you're only going four or five maybe six miles an hour uphill uh, in low gear. So it will climb most hills as long as you have a full tank of gas. This particular car has the fuel tank under the seat like most of the cars did and it's gravity fed there's no fuel pump so when you go up a steep hill sometimes the fuel tank can be lower the fuel level can be lower than the carburetor so if you don't have a full tank of gas you, you can't make it up some hills you have to back up the hills that's a whole nother thing um so for today's purposes i do have basically a full tank of gas we can definitely go up the hills that we're going to go up i've done it a few times um but um but yeah so basically that's how it functions those are the pedals these are the controls here now, once we start driving, it's going to be a little bit loud in here at some time, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me, maybe not. Um, but that should give you an idea of what I'm doing. So um, once we start it, you'll see that when I'm ready to take off, I put the parking brake in neutral, I hit the clutch. And, and another thing about the clutch, you want to firmly press this down. You don't want to ease into it like a modern car. You're not feathering the clutch. You want to pretty firmly push it down with force. That way you don't wear out those bands faster than you need to. And then it'll take off. And then when I shift, uh, so I'll rev it up in low gear, get built up as much speed as possible. Then I'll lower the throttle a little bit and I'll let it out into high gear after I've already released the parking brake. And then you'll notice there'll be a big jump. Um, and like I said, it'll be a little noisy, but hopefully you'll, you'll still be able to hear me while we're driving. Okay, so let's get into it. So to start it, we've got the parking brake on. I've got the uh, timing fully retarded. I'm gonna give it a little bit of throttle here. I'm gonna turn the key to battery and then hit the starter button to get it running, and then we'll be switching the key over to Magneto. We drive it on the Magneto. Okay. There we are, now we're on the Magneto. 
I've got the timing set kind of in the middle, and I've got the throttle low, so it's idling. You hear me relatively well here, but like I said, there'll be times when it gets pretty loud and you won't really be able to hear me very well. Okay, so, I'll put the parking brake in the middle, so now we're in neutral. Now I can press the clutch in firmly, and we'll take off. I'm going to give it some gas first, and then we'll be good. This area is lots of hills. My biggest challenge here is keeping the car going slow enough that I don't get out of control on these hills. So now the hill's not too steep yet, but it's going to start to gain. Uh, it's going to start to drop a little bit more. So here we are, fully retarded on the timing. The throttle all the way forward, slow as it'll go, and we're still cruising along at a pretty decent speed here. We're probably going 20, 25 miles an hour. So we're going at a decent speed, and this is as slow as I can go in high gear. If the only way I can go slower is if I move this down into low gear. And we will have to do that later when we go down to the steep hill. But so now the hill has kind of leveled out, the road's leveled out a little bit. So now I'm moving both the, um, the timing and the throttle. The timing is kind of first, so I can use the timing lever to pick up a little bit of speed. And then if I want some more speed, I give a little bit of throttle. Now here we're going. So we're probably still going about the same speed, probably 20, 25 miles an hour. But the controls are in a different location now than they were just a few seconds ago. The road is going to get uh, steeper again in just a minute. So again, I will have to change the throttle and the timing. So it's kind of a, kind of a never ending thing, at least where I'm driving, because the hills, I mean, the roads are so hilly. So, we'll go ahead and come on down the hill, and then we'll show you how to stop, and then go up and down a few other hills. So. Like I said, this is actually a really enjoyable uh, part of the drive. It's pretty quiet. It's going at decent speed, so this is kind of nice. Now the road slope went off. We're going to accelerate. I actually 
actually have to, I can only climb it in low gear. And that's what I was talking about, where we'll be going probably five miles an hour top. Uh, it's not a very long hill we're going to climb, and then we're going to make a turn, and we're going to go back kind of downhill, and then uphill again, and we'll work our way back to where we started. But okay, so here we go. Coming into a stop. So I use the engine braking, go down into the low gear, slow it down even more. Put it in neutral, and hit the brake just barely. So the last few feet there, I stopped with the brake, but that was it. Now, we got to climb this hill in low gear. Okay, so we made it up that hill, and now we're going back down to it again. Uh, but this is a very slight uh, decline. So, so again, now I've had to change the timing and the throttle, and I've got them both set as far forward as possible to get the car to go as slow as I can. This isn't too steep, so I'll advance the timing just a little bit, pick up our speed, and again, we're probably going 20 miles an hour now. The top speed of the car is supposed to be 40 miles per hour, um, I got it up to 37 once going downhill. I don't think it'll go much faster than that. I don't think you want to go much faster than that. But so really, around 30 miles an hour is your cruising speed. Me on these streets with all the hills, it's closer to 25. So here we go, we're going to stop. Same thing. Going to low here, to help us slow down. And then at the very end, put it in neutral, and hit the brake. So there you go. That's how you drive it. That's how you stop it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing.